In these examples, we want to try to find the rational zeros, which are nice zeros. Those are, if they're a decimal, they're going to terminate or repeat. So we want to find the rational zeros and then decide if it's got uh, even or odd multiplicity based on what it's doing at that x-intercept. All right, so this first one, I'm not going to be able to factor this. So the only way I'm going to be able to answer this question is to put it into my calculator. I've already put it into y equals, and I'm going to look at the standard window and see what I see. Okay, so it came down and went back up. That's degree four. That makes sense. So I see two places where it's crossing. Now, I could mess with the window and get a nicer, cleaner looking picture, but since I'm focusing in on this x-axis, I really don't need to do that. It looks like it's crossing at that nice point of negative three. To verify, I'm gonna hit trace, and then I'm gonna type in negative three. And sure enough, it confirms that y equals zero. So negative three is a zero. Because it's crossing, we would say it has to have odd multiplicity. Where else? Well, if this is one, then that would be two. So let's try trace two. And yes, that is also a zero. And it would also have odd multiplicity. So this first example, I put a little bit nicer picture here in the notes. Negative three and two are our zeros and they both have odd multiplicity. Let's take a look at this other function. So I'm gonna go to y equals. Let's just kind of tweak this equation delete that and then it says minus 6x and plus 7. all right so i've got that let's go ahead and hit graph oh okay well that doesn't look like it quite crossed at nice points let's get a cleaner picture let's get rid of some of these negative x's positive x's. We don't need all this detail down here. So in my window, I might go from negative 5 to 5. And then on my y's, let's don't go any lower than negative 5. See if that gives me clearer. Yeah, it does. The bad part is, though, it doesn't look like if this is 1, 2, it's crossing somewhere between negative 2 and negative 3. I don't want to have to guess what that is. So we're going to use some features on our calculator second trace to get to the calculate menu and we're looking for zero so number two and it's blinking here on my polynomial well i want to go back close to what i'm looking for which is the first place it crosses back here and the question is what's the left bound so i need to go keep going left there well I, now i'm left of it i want to make sure i'm really left so that's left of that crossing point now it's asking, it's a little hard to read there, but it's asking, what's your right bound? So we're going to use the right arrow. That's close. That's still close. That's definitely to the right of what we're looking for. And then I'm going to go back. It says, can you guess? Well, both of those are close, so we'll just guess there. And it gives me this long decimal number. I don't see any re repetition there. I'm not going to assume that it's terminating uh, it just, that's the only number of characters it can display. So that's not a rational zero. Now, some of you might be wondering, what's, wait a minute, your Y isn't zero. Well, remember that E notation means scientific notation. So this means negative one times 10 to the negative 12. It's a rounding issue within our calculator. You can always assume that's really the same as a zero. All right. That method of finding zeros with our calculator works, but it's a little tedious. So let me show you a second way. If you go to your y equals and you graph y equals zero, that's going to give us the horizontal line that is the same as the x-axis. All right, so when I hit graph, I'm really not going to see anything different because it just graphed a line over my x-axis. The reason this is a little bit nicer is because when I go to second calculate, I don't choose zero. I instead choose intersect. I want to intersect those two equations, that nice polynomial and that horizontal line. So I'm going to hit enter. And let's see if we can figure out what this next zero is, if it's a rational number or not. So you can see it's blinking on the curvy polynomial. I hit enter. And then it says, is this your second curve? And notice where it's blinking. It's blinking along our x-axis. So we say yes, enter. And now it says, can you guess? So you have to move your cursor close. That's pretty close to that zero. Okay, so 
confirms y equals 0, and here's this ugly x number again, a non-terminating, non-repeating value, so that is not a rational 0 either. Let's see if this last one perhaps is rational. So second, calculate, I'm going to choose intersect. Okay, so it's blinking, yep, on my polynomial. Now it's blinking, yep, on the x-axis. And then we're going to guess, this time we move close to that last zero. And once again, we get a decimal number that doesn't repeat, doesn't end. So we actually, on this one, have no rational zeros. All right, then if you were to go, I put one more in here just for, for extra. I've got x to the third plus 7x squared plus 8x minus 16. When you graph this one, you're going to notice that at negative 4 and at 1, you're touching the x-axis. But here's the difference. At negative 4, you notice it's touching and turning, so that means I have even multiplicity. At 1, we cross, so that would have odd multiplicity.